Develop Treatment Alternatives, or DTA, is available from the If You Just Planning Cycle. DTA walks you through the process of picking a landscape, making edits to simulate your existing landscape condition as well as treatment alternatives, populating and running a fire behavior model for these landscapes, and comparing model outputs for each landscape. This allows you to gauge the impact of treatments as well as develop further landscape treatments. First, we'll select an originating landscape. This is any landscape that has not been edited, which will define the extent for the analysis area. Edited versions of that landscape will become available in later steps. If you want to further constrain the extent of your landscape, you can select an area of interest that falls within it. If you leave this area of interest blank, it'll run DTA across the entire landscape. Constraining your analysis to an area of interest makes it easier to interpret results later, as you can look at changes just within your treatment area rather than across the entire landscape. As I begin, I'll use the split screen button so that we can see the map on the left and still have our interface on the right. First I'll select the landscape, then I'll go ahead and select some treatment polygons I've created using the area of interest option. Before we continue, it's important to note here that the developed treatment alternatives can only be run once per extent. So once I choose the fire behavior modeling parameters and proceed from that point, the fire behavior scenario is locked in. This is done to ensure the comparison across the landscapes are all under the same fire behavior conditions. I can always continue to make additional edited versions of the landscape and compare those, but once I choose the fire inputs, those are locked in. Proceeding to the Edit tab and going to the Landscape drop-down, I can see my originating landscape as well as an edited version of my landscape that I had created earlier and named with an EC to help me identify it as the existing condition. That is the landscape that is closest to the condition of my land right now after making a couple small changes to the original land fire version. And here I'm going to make some edits to simulate a treatment. In this case, I'll use the default treatment rules to represent a light thin pile burn within the treatment area, followed by a broadcast burn. Note that if I hover over the rules, I can get more detail on each one. They're also described in the Help Center. I'll give this edited version a name and click Save New Landscape. Next, I need to provide the landscape fire behavior model inputs that all these versions of the landscape will be evaluated under. If needed, I could go to the modeling playground and run through some various fire modeling scenarios to get an idea of what these inputs should be. You might have a specific set of inputs on hand already that you can use. Uh, another option would be to use inputs from the Auto 97th Percentile Fire Behavior Summary if you want to use auto 97th percentile values. And I'll do that here just to show the process of navigating to Playground and back to this part of DTA. I'll go to Playground, find an auto 97th run for this area I conducted earlier, and select the View Inputs option. I can make a note of these inputs, then navigate back to where we were via the planning cycle, I'll input the same originating landscape and treatment area, and that will allow us to skip back to this treatment input tab. From here, we'll input our model parameters and save. Then proceed to the model run tab. Here we can rename each model if we choose. I'll leave these names as is and initiate the model run. Note the status buttons here. We can refresh the status of our landscapes if we've just created some additional ones or the status of the model runs. This process might take a few minutes for the models to run, which is another reason why these status refresh buttons are helpful. Next, I'll proceed to the Compare Alternatives tab and we can compare any two landscapes at a time. The first landscape selected will be the treatment or alternative. The second one selected will be the existing landscape. 
to generate a summary report of the changes in landscape features and fire behavior, click the Compare in Summary Report button and follow the prompts to generate the reports. Uh, these reports will be generated and saved in my workspace. As we'll see in a second, the summary reports have a variety of graphs and tables displaying the landscape features and model output side by side, which are very helpful. Before that though, I'll also select View on Map to see our changes spatially. And it might take a minute for these to load, but once it does load, we can see the first thing that comes up is an indication of the landscape file changes, specifically fuel model change is the first layer to show up. And we can see that within these polygons, the fuel models have changed. If I continue browsing this, I can look at canopy cover percent change, and we can see in layer list, our scale runs from warmer colors to cool colors, warm being an increase, uh, cool being decreases. So we can see that there's a decrease in percent canopy cover here. Browsing more, I can see a general increase in canopy base heights. The same approach is used for fire behavior outputs. Looking at these on the map and starting with flame length, I can see a lot of deep blue colors indicating a substantial decrease in flame lengths. Now we do have our map scale here shown in layer list, and this is very helpful to see the overall decrease, but to better quantify this, this is where the compare and summary report button is really helpful. For example, going into fire behavior compare, we can open the report and browse fire behavior features on the left. Uh, we saw a substantial decrease in flame length going from existing landscape to the treated landscape. If I click flame length in this report, I can see a side-by-side -side bar chart, as well as a table view, pie charts, and the percent change chart. And this is really handy because in this example, for instance, we can see our existing landscape, 65% of the area within the polygons was modeled to have over 25 foot flame lengths. And in the post-treatment, there are zero cells modeled to have over 25 feet flame lengths and there has been a big shift in those low flame lengths one to four feet whereas existing landscape that had 13 percent of the polygon area modeled for those low flame lengths now that's increased to 81 percent so a very noticeable shift from high flame lengths to low flame lengths uh, looking at rate of spread, that bar chart, we can see a similar story. Uh, general shift from high rates of spread to lower rates of spread. And hovering over these bars, we can get the exact percent. Now, these tables here as well can be downloaded as CSV, Excel files, or PDF. So if you wanted to download this data and analyze it further in a spreadsheet, you could do that. All these graphs are also downloadable as PNGs, JPEGs, or PDFs, so if you wanted to use a specific graphic in another report, that's easy to do. We can also use the Download Report button at the very top right of the screen to download this entire report. One last thing I'll note here is that these reports are saved in my workspace. This map view here is generated on the fly, so if we wanted to get back to this point later, uh, we would return to it in a similar way as we return to DTA from the modeling playground, going through the planning cycle, inputting the landscape and treatment area, and then skipping to this tab in DTA. So that's a very brief summary. If you want to learn more, you can visit the Help Center, where additional information can be found under Cycle, Strategic Planning, and the Develop Treatment Alternatives topic, which has an overview and step-by-step -step page, as well as information on editing landscapes and editing rules.